So just in general in the industry, obviously we're seeing a bit of a slowdown in performance, uh, in performance growth anyway. Are you seeing that with Marriott as well? So there's lots going on with that question. Let's first talk about the fundamental underpinnings of RevPAR, which is economic growth in the regions where our hotels are. So when you've got a situation like this year where global economic growth has been a little bit lower, uh, the reality is that's going to impact lodging demand, which impacts our business. However, when you look at then the share that we're getting of the demand that's out there, we're very pleased to see that we've increased our RevPAR index by, call it 100 basis points in the first quarter. And that's, on a, that's really a result of a number of things. First of all, it is about making sure that we keep our brands relevant that we're keeping up with the new and latest, greatest trends of what our customers want in the various brands. It's also about making sure that then uh, we're working with our owners to keep those hotels uh, new and fresh with the design and with the, the state of the product that our guests are staying in. And then I would say absolutely just as important, uh, if not more so, is Bonvoy, Marriott Bonvoy, our loyalty program, which is when you are able to build something for your customers that helps them across their entire travel journey. And then also you can make sure that the experience they actually have in the hotel is as rich and personal as possible. We think that that builds a system where our guests want to basically make sure that wherever their travel is, that they're, they're staying with us. Mm -hmm. And that is all about driving RevPAR. And we heard today and we've heard before that people are traveling more than ever. So it's about capturing that, ca capturing Marriott's share of that of that guest. And and that's one of the places that I think our global reach has has become even more important. When you think about the growth in international travel trips, uh, you know, there's always been lots of travel where folks are you know traveling around their state or their region. But I think increasingly what you're seeing is that whether it's in China, whether it's in South America, whether it's in Florida, that uh, our customers are traveling internationally. And that's where having the global size and scale that we have is so powerful because when they know they've seen uh, a great Sheridan hotel in their area and then they're going to China, for example, or vice versa, that they're comfortable uh, staying with the brands that they know. And with the growth that we've had and now being in 131 countries and over 7,000 hotels, I think that's a really important distinction advantage that we have in making sure those customers stay at our hotels. I thought it was really interesting to hear Arnie talk about, um, to answer that question of, of are there too many brands this morning, to answer it a little differently and to say that basically you see it as one brand now, that Bonvoy unites yes. the brands. Are you seeing that that, that, that is uh, helping with, the, with, with at least the, the perceived confusion over brands for, like in, in the uh, consumer space? Oh, c certainly. Uh, one of the great uh, examples is when you think about a legacy Starwood prior to the, to the acquisition, legacy Starwood, uh, and they were able to go to lots of great hotels, for example, in Asia Pacific. But if they wanted to go to a select service hotel in the US, uh, there were far fewer choices as compared to the thousands of hotels that now on the co with the combined company that we are able to offer. Mm -hmm. So uh, you get to a position where you can kind of say whatever, whatever travel need you have, whether it's a soccer tournament, whether it's a 60th birthday celebration, uh, whether it is a, a wedding, et cetera, that there is a particular place and a particular brand that fits the need of your travel. And then uh, to tie that all together and make sure that you benefit the most from that, you have Bonvoy. And as you build your loyalty points uh, and are able to have all these experiences, quite frankly, not only just with at the hotels, but also with all the activities that through Bonvoy you can sign up for through our Place Pass and Marriott moments, that, that then it really, you, the customer feels comfortable to say, I, I can really have all my travel needs met here. 
So it's been a big focus, the loyalty program, and, and a big investment for Marriott here uh, recently. Mm -hmm. I imagine it's going to continue to be a big focus and also an, uh, a, a, an area of focus for investment. But can you talk a little bit about beyond that? Like, what are what are some of the uh, spending and, and investment priorities for Marriott going forward for 2019 and 2020? You know, we have. Um a great model where we are an asset light model. So relative to the cash flow we generate, actually I would argue our investment is not uh, that high. But we do expect this year to spend say 600 to 800 million of investing in the growth of our company. And it really kind of falls around uh, several areas. First is call it roughly a bit over 200 million that is good old fashioned maintenance capex. So mm -hmm. that is, maintaining our uh, hotels that we own or that we lease and are just our kind of general corporate maintenance capex. And then there's another, call it about a quarter of these total investments that are, uh, as you've described, for reinvesting in our systems. Mm -hmm. And those are typically ones that actually the owners over time reimburse us for as part of the, uh, the charges that we have for the cost of all the services that we provide. And then the remainder, which is probably about half, is on the, the true growth of the business. So whether that's in the form of a mezzanine loan, an equity uh, investment, or uh, key money, so uh, investing in a particular contract, uh, those are investments that are all designed to help the system grow.